ex-boyfriends, flings, guys I've dated, crushes who had no idea I existed. They've all got one major thing in common, aside from me. They're straight men in musical theater. Here's what I learned from them. Even if you aren't interested in straight men, I think a lot of this advice is still applicable in other parts of your life or with whoever you are dating if you want to date anyone. The good thing too is that regardless of your sexuality, we can all enjoy um, laughing at my past mistakes. And by no means do I hate straight men in musical theater. I think that's kind of a trend that I've seen going around on TikTok and in Rachel Bloom's book. I mean, clearly I don't hate straight men in musical theater. In fact, I really love straight men in musical theater, clearly. This is a very layered, nuanced topic Topic, and I am by no means an expert on any of this. Please, I am just a Dorito. These are just my personal experiences and um, some stuff I wish I had known earlier in my life. Also, if this is your first time seeing my face, hi, my name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. That's just what we call ourselves, okay? Not a real cult. Major thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Question of the day, what's a piece of dating or love advice you wish you had earlier in life? Share some knowledge. Let us know in the comments down below. Personally, I've found that in most cases, dating in musical theater for women who are attracted to men is kind of a joke. Oh, I guess it's time to complain about the woes of heterosexual dating. From the time I was growing up in kids community theater or doing summer camp theater, school theater, the ratio of guys to girls was so unmatched. In a weird way, it very quickly turned male attention into this prize to be won and like a social status marker because there were so few guys, if a guy liked you, that means that you must be so much better than everyone else. And of course that's not true. Like male attention doesn't make you better. You are just like awesome as yourself. But that was just kind of the culture that I grew up in. So because I had conflated male attention with so many other positive attributes, I kind of had this insecurity that if I hadn't hit certain milestones at the same time that my friends did, it was an indicator that I was unworthy of love, that I wasn't cool enough, that I wasn't pretty enough, that I wasn't talented enough. Oh, that's why the guy I like won't ask me out. Because I'm literal gutter trash. By the end of high school, I'm officially the token innocent one in any given friend group. I win every single round of never have I ever because I had never done anything ever. And subsequently that got fetishized because our society has this weird obsession with female purity. So then I clung to that identity way longer than I needed to because it at least made me feel special. I felt like no matter what, I couldn't win. So what I'm saying is that it's all dumb. Societal expectations, what your friends are doing, what your parents want you to do, these are all things that you can totally take into consideration. But at the end of the day, it's about you and what you feel comfy with and what makes you happy. So like you need to listen to yourself. Try your best to make decisions not out of fear, but toward what will bring you more happiness and opportunities and good stuff. Please don't settle just because you feel like you have to have something. Someone. And don't let a lack of dating experience make you feel badly about yourself. Again, the ratio of guys to girls in this industry is absolutely insane, especially early on. It's like musical chairs, someone's gotta get left out. And that's not a reflection on you as a person or your worthiness of love. Someone else's success does not equate to your failure. And I wish I had really understood that earlier. So originally when I started putting this video together, I thought I was gonna cover like a giant assortment of men and I wanted to do a whole timeline and here's how things shifted and then I realized, oh my god, this video is going to be 10 hours long. This is not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is just my dating history. So know that I have lots more where these came from if you like this and you want something longer. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be sharing two specific short examples. For the sake of privacy, I'm not going to name any names and I'm making things purposefully difficult to find. So I'd just say, please don't try to figure out who these guys are. You probably don't know them any. Anyway. Yeah, you know what? Any relation to any persons living or dead is uh, purely coincidental. These are all fictional musical theater characters. Definitely not based on real men I've known in real life. I'm just here to talk about uh, Gabe from Next to Normal. 
Gabe was straight out of a Disney Channel original movie. Homecoming King, valedictorian, he drove a pickup truck, a red pickup truck. He was American as apple pie. He was every teacher's favorite. He was this perfect protective older brother. He really was Superboy and I felt like the invisible girl. Except that we definitely weren't related. That metaphor ended up working out way less well than I was anticipating. Oh my God, we are not related. I wanna talk about him because I feel like he stands as a really great example of trying to get over a guy you never actually dated. And for me personally, this was also a very sneaky example of falling for the idea of someone rather than who they actually are. In this case, I had just kind of decided that this guy is perfect. He is amazing, he can do no wrong, and to be fair, he was kind of a golden boy, but I absolutely put him up on a pedestal. What exacerbated it even more is that the reason things ended was out of our control. I moved across the country and that distance kind of turned him into a martyr. We never got together, but we definitely never broke up. Do I sound crazy or do you get what I'm saying? Like there wasn't a reason to hate him. There wasn't enough time for him to break my heart. It just kind of stopped in the middle. So you had all of this potential and possibilities floating around. Would things have progressed if we lived in the same area? Probably not. Genuinely, I, I don't think we ever would have gotten together. But because I never got that closure, it kind of stayed as this big painful what if in my life. Like I had put him up on this pedestal and now I couldn't pull him down. And I compared every single guy to him. Because I had built up this image of him, I thought, oh my God, he was perfect. He was the great love of my life. He's my soulmate and I let him get away. I totally blew it. This is something that I will never ever be able to heal from. Needless to say, while I was writing this video, I literally forgot to include him. Seriously, I didn't even consider it until my mom asked if I had included him on the shortlist. So I know that it seems impossible, but truly, time heals all wounds. Even if they don't close up all the way, the pain becomes so much more manageable. If you like him, tell him! And if you've decided you're never gonna tell him, start working on getting over him. There is no reason to continue torturing yourself wondering if he's going to confess his love for you. You can totally keep that door open, but explore other options too. And know when to make a move. Oh my gosh, I am so bad about this because it scares the absolute heck out of me, but I need to take my own advice. Actually making a move on someone you like isn't that scary. It's the anticipation that sucks, but once you make a move, you get answers and answers bring clarity. And I sound like a Pinterest quote. I'd like you guys to meet Curly. He always had his guitar with him, and not in like an annoying show-offy way. He had the most genuine love and respect of art and theater and acting and music. There was something really cool about seeing someone that passionate about something, especially when it's the same thing you're passionate about. And it's funny because I feel like I met this guy at exactly the right time, even though timing is what ultimately ended up ending things. But he was exactly who I needed at that moment in my life, and I am forever grateful for him. He really showed me how I'd like to be treated in a relationship, and by that I mean he really respected me. Like I don't think I had understood the concept of respect in terms of partners and men, and he, he showed me what that should look like. He made a big effort with my family and my parents loved him. They're still obsessed with him. He really went out of his way to make sure that I felt safe both on stage in the show that we were working on at the time and really mainly off stage just in our day-to-day -day life. And he was so proud of me. Like he he was really happy to like pull me in and, and show me off to his family and friends and colleagues and people he had worked with. And again, not in a show-offy way. He was just doing it because because he thought I was genuinely that cool and that he liked me that much. I didn't really understand that men could be that nice to me in real life. Like I thought those were traits and things reserved for the pretty girl in the book. Like I thought it was just all fictional character stuff and it wasn't. Wanting to be respected in a relationship is not some daydream fantasy fan fiction thing. It's a fundamental that should be present in your relationship. Obviously I'm not dating this guy, but I have still so much love for him. You know? And I think that's an important part of love that we don't get to see very often. Just because things didn't work out into some incredible long-term relationship or partnership or marriage doesn't mean that it didn't turn out exactly the way that it needed to be. You can still have a lot of love and learn a lot and have a lot of great memories and 
that's okay too. As you can see, I had another section of this video that while I was editing it, I decided not to include. I'm trying really hard to be more open and share more parts of my life with you guys, but this ended up being something that I'm not quite ready to share publicly yet. Funny enough, the topic of this section was on creating boundaries and sticking up for yourself, which I guess I'm implementing right now. Thanks for understanding. Wow, we are really leaning into the whole slumber party motif now, aren't we? So I wanted to share some tips and some advice, not necessarily things that I would attribute to specific men in my life, just a general assortment, a charcuterie board of dating tips, sort of like a greatest hits. Let's go with that. Forget the charcuterie board analogy. That was weird. If he really wants to be with you, he will be. This applies to guys with girlfriends, guys who keep hooking up with you but don't want to put a label on it. That crush that you've liked forever that you're not really sure where you stand with because every once in a while he'll kind of flirt with you but then he won't text you back for like days. If you don't know where you stand for like more than a couple of weeks, maybe months if he's really shy, there's your answer. That being said, there have been tons of times that like I've liked a guy who was too scared to make the first move. And to that I say, ladies, make a move. In terms of what to wear on a date, I think you should wear whatever you feel the most confident in. All of those weird magazine tricks of like wear a certain color or do your hair like this or wear vanilla perfume because that'll apparently turn him on. Did we all read the same article from Seventeen magazine? There's no need to squeeze yourself into some mold of what you think he likes. You don't need any tricks to get the guy. You are enough on your own. Plus you'll feel so much happier and feel so much more badass if you show up wearing what you like and what you feel hot in. I remember when I was growing up I always heard the saying of like, have a life outside of your guy. Keep your schedule full. Show him that you're in demand. Guys like busy girls. False. I like busy girls. For sure compromise and make time for each other, but give your dreams the respect they deserve. One of the best pieces of relationship advice I've ever gotten was actually from my friend Olivia. There's a whole song about clams. If you feel like you have to keep something a secret, it's probably a bad sign. Like if you're dating someone and they say something or do something to you and your first instinct is, oh, better not repeat that to my friends or family because they'll tell me to break up with him. You should probably break up with him. You know that they're looking out for you and you're not looking out for yourself. Speaking of my friend Olivia, Clams. If you guys don't know, she is the most talented filmmaker and comedian. Her boyfriend Jake is also a mega talented musician, singer, songwriter. He's got a new single dropping called Overcomplicated and they actually shot a music video for it and I'm in it! Yee! Jake and Olivia did an incredible job on this project. Getting to act again felt amazing. Being back on set now under full safety procedures was a new experience for sure. I actually got to vlog a lot of it, so that'll be out over on the second channel soon. You can find that second channel over on youtube.com, but for now, let's talk about another one of my favorite websites, skillshare.com. <laughs> Hi. This Valentine's Day, I'm doing something very sexy and very cool. I'm taking a class on Skillshare. I'm being absolutely serious. My workload and life schedule has been completely out of control for the last couple months, so I'm taking Valentine's Day as a self-care, self-love day, and I can't wait. I'm gonna take a long, hot shower, I'm gonna go pick up some takeout from a local restaurant, and then I'm gonna get all snuggly in my PJs and log in to Skillshare. I feel like I talk about them all the time, but if you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. They have literally thousands of classes on pretty much every subject. If you're feeling restless and you want a new creative challenge, Skillshare is perfect for that. If you want to learn a new skill or hobby, Skillshare's also got you covered. I'm looking forward to finishing up Thomas Frank's class on productivity for creatives. His whole approach is about building structure and systems that set you up to do your best creative work rather than just waiting around for inspiration to strike. So if you want to join me in that class or any other that Skillshare has to offer, just click the link down below. The first 1,000 people to click it will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and then after that, it's only like $10 a month. Skillshare also makes the perfect Valentine's Day date because Skillshare will never ghost you or flirt with your friends. Skillshare didn't tell me to say that, I just thought I'd remind you. I know Valentine's Day in general can be weird, and if you feel weird about it, whether or not you're single, if you feel like there's some big expectation on it, try to just release that and enjoy the day. I will be your Valentine. This is me formally asking you, will you be my Valentine? I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.